hello guys welcome back to my channel so i know i haven't done a voiceover in a long time and um i've been getting so many requests to do that and explaining details so i said i was gonna do like a more detailed video for you guys so as you can see um for this tile i'm gonna be using the um outray expression spring twist i'm using this particular um brand compared to like the regular spring twist i usually use because I offer like the distressed and the f I offer slightly distressed and fully distressed um, locks. So fully distressed is leaning towards like the butterfly locks, and while the slightly distressed is um, leaning towards like regular distressed locks. So I also got a question about parts. When it comes to locks, I usually like to use the diamond or the free um, freestyle. Um, people call it different things, but I just like to use the um, the circle shape compared to like the boxy parts. But sometimes clients specifically, you know, ask if I could do like the box in front so they can always flip it, you know, to different sides. While some just do, um, while some just let me, you know do whatever i want to do but when it comes to locks i always like to use the free parts compared to box the boxy parts um it doesn't really matter if um the, it doesn't really matter the parts you use your locks are still gonna lay flat regardless because i had i got this question so i just wanted to address it before i would move on in the beginning of the video, if you looked closely, you would see that um, I used Shine and Jam. Honestly, I only use Shine and Jam because I've tried other um, products and I feel like the um, they tend to um, leave oil. I don't know how that works, but um, I've seen braiders who prefer using certain um uh, edge controls or certain jams and when i try them i don't really like them but um shine and jam works for me so i usually just buy them in bulk and that's all i use so before i continue if you're new to my channel welcome my name is jessica i'm a braider in california and um, if you're an old subscriber, thank you for always coming back. Thank you for supporting me. If you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. Support me so I can grow. And also like, share, comment. Let me know, you know what you like to see, any feedback you have for me. And I truly appreciate it. So if this is not your first time on my channel, you would know that for my locks, I usually use um, kinky hair. As my base then I usually and I always use spring twist to wrap but this time around my client was going for a shorter length and um, my hair supplies has not arrived yet even till this moment so I had to improvise and instead of using kinky hair as the base I also used um, the spring twist as the base so what I did was I just took like a bigger chunk so it could add um, a little volume you know i don't know you should understand what i'm talking about so that's what i did and also when wrapping i wrap with little hair um you're also gonna see you know what i do i wrap with little hair i start wrapping with little hair so the roots are not bulky because i know i get those questions all the time so guys yes again i would say when you start wrapping you um start with um little hair and as you wrap you um use like more hair more hair more hair if you want your locks really tiny then you can just go ahead and wrap with you know little hair but if you want your locks to be like regular size just start with small hair as you can see um what i'm doing right now then as i went down i took like um bigger chunks and i wrapped with bigger chunks just to you know give it like the normal size so I also got another question um, about um, when I wrap with a little hair, does it hurt my client? Do I wrap too tightly? The first thing before I start every client's hair or any client's hair, I usually ask, are you tender headed? You know, what is your level of pain? Because some people, you know, are really sensitive. So I'm like, if, you know, if it's too tight in any way, I always want my clients to feel comfortable because after getting your hair done, you definitely sleep at night. So I don't want you to, 
not feel comfortable you know raising your head or laying on the pillow so i always ask so i always i would encourage before you wrap or before you finish a certain style or locks or braids you always you should always ask if it is it too tight because some people will not want to tell you so they don't hurt your feelings but they're actually in pain so it's always good to ask that question so the thing is sometimes most people tell me girl i want it really tight i don't go too tight because you know but i try to be tight you know because everyone has different level of pain tolerance like i said so always ask and um you know make sure they're comfortable and also make sure your hair is not too loose and not too tight as well so another question i got was how many locks do i do on a client's head honestly i would say this question is um, it, it's different for everyone because some people have really um, big heads. I'm not trying to say like, I'm not trying to, you know, mock anyone's head shape, but some people have really big head while some people have small head. So the amount of locks I'm going to do on someone with a bigger head, it's definitely going to be different some, from um, the amount of locks I'm going to do on someone with a smaller head. So I would say as a braider or as a stylist, you should always, you know, calculate Pre-part, pre-parting is really, really important, especially when the client is new. This client in the video, I have done her hair before. If you've watched my flat soft locks tutorial, you will realize that she's the same person and I've done her hair so many times. So for new clients, um, when it comes to locks, I always pre-part. So I know, okay, I need to fix this hair. I need to do this. I need more hair, you know, and also it depends on the length. So when it comes to like bob, mid back, I usually do like 45 to 50 and I do not go over 50 because, you know, and again, it depends if the client's head is big. So it can also go up, just depends. But when it comes to like butt length, you know, knee length, I do not go over 40 or 45 because the longer the hair is, locks are really lightweight and the protective styles, but when they're too heavy, it becomes too heavy um sorry when they're too much it becomes too heavy so you just need to know how many locks to do and pre-parting also helps you know yeah so i got another question asking about um the gods to be spray i use i would say this has helped me so much i would rather use gods to be than mousse because, I mean, they both, you know, have the areas they, they, um, the purpose they serve. But I use most and I use my um, guts to be. But when I do locks, I love to use guts to be because it just keeps it in place. And um, I feel like it tends to last longer when you use the spray on your locks. It just, it just makes it, you know, I don't know. I don't know how to explain this, but if you're a stylist or you or you do your hair yourself, I feel you should try this and you know let me know the results. But yes, I hundred percent recommend using your got to be spray on your locks or even on your braids or your hair. It's safe and um, it doesn't damage your hair, it doesn't damage your locks. It's um, instead it keeps it safe, it makes it last longer. So for the got to be, yes, I hundred percent recommend that. Another question I got is, do you braid the little hair in front of your client's head? Um, it depends. Um, some some clients come with like head full of hair, like almost getting to their brows. While some people, you know, have hair loss and bald spots. But when it comes to like short hair in front, if I know I can grip it and it's not going to damage the client's hair, yes, I do. But most times, most times I just slick it back or I... You know, I just lay the edges. So, and most of them requested, hey girl, this is off, you know, this is off limits. I would like to lay this. I want baby hair. I want them extra. I don't want baby hair. But when you don't have, you know, a lot of front hair, I usually recommend um, there's nothing I can really do because the hair in that area is short and me gripping it might cause more damage. So, I would like to just slick it back. So, I feel it's all about communication. Some people will want you to grip it and you as a stylist, you know that, okay, this is good and this is not good. While some people will be like, you know what, don't do it. And you're like, okay, sure, it's your hair, you know, whatever makes you comfortable. So yeah, for that part, I grip what um, is okay and healthy for the hair. 
and um if the client what doesn't want it sure i do not and if the client wants it and it's okay i do but yes i always feel if your client wants you if your clients or client wants you to grip the hair and um it's short or you don't feel like it's gonna be a good idea as a stylist it's also good to communicate hey girl this is what i think you know this is what i think and at the end of the day it's still you know it's still left to the client to decide but always try to voice out your professional you know opinion to your clients so guys um i hope i was able to answer some of the um recurring questions that i've been getting if you still have questions my comment section is always open so you can leave the, your questions in the comment section and i'll try to answer them but if i need to make a video of course i would definitely make another video answering them i hope this video was helpful um please give it a thumbs up if you like it hopefully you like it subscribe to my channel if you haven't share to your friends this video might help one person or another out there and um yeah thank you for stopping by today and i'll see you in my next video